I recently attended a concert in Germany and left with memories of a special presence and healing voice. We are lucky enough to have that calm presence in the studio with us today. Marta Ermela Davy is a spiritual teacher who is well known wor worldwide for her magical music. Mataji, thank you for joining us today. Um, please tell me, how did, you, how did you come to Europe? How did you come to be here? Just like anyone else comes, by flight. <laughs> <laughs> and your spiritual journey, I imagine, was more complex. T can you tell us when that started and how it progressed? Well, after seeing the heights of success in my work in the West um, and observing that it did not bring the inner contentment, it used to bring uh, short-term joy, but it didn't last. This joy would not last. And the problems in everyday life will not uh, uh, diminish. So seeing all, uh, being under all that pressure and uh, once in a while having a thought about uh, what is all this about? What, where does it lead to? I started looking for some deeper meaning in life. And what happened next? How did you, where did you look from that point onwards? I, as coming from a family who had been always uh, living wisdom and uh, uh, living in accordance, accordance to the rules of nature, I reverted back to my ancient tradition. Which was, and, which was what? Which was yoga and Ayurveda, mm -hmm. lifestyle. And um, there I got a lot of help in the beginning from my father and his friend circle. And so I again came in contact with the old scriptures that describe about all these mysteries that, and also describe the way of uh, how to uncover these mysteries of life, so much is hidden beyond the scene, the beyond the visible scene. And uh, so I just wanted to know more and more. And I wanted to discover myself. Who am I? And, and what did you find out as you started tra traveling into these scriptures and this knowledge? What, what did you discover? What did you find there? It was a very beautiful experience. It was, I discovered that um, we are not separate. Subtler we go, we are all united. And there is one power that governs everything in this world. And we are not separate from that power. And that one power is uniting us all. And what does this power mean to you? When you say a power, what do you understand it to be? Many call it higher consciousness, many call it universal consciousness, many call it God. And for you, what is it? Or can, can you say, can you, is it possible to describe it? Or? It is tough to put it in words. It's like uh, trying to put ocean in a, bas in a, in a bucket. Okay, <laughs> we won't be trying that in the studio. <laughs> so, Tell us a bit more about what it's like to be to be Ermela the person. Um, what what your what your life is like? What your day to day life is like now? Very busy life because you feel the responsibility uh, towards the society. You feel the responsibility towards the environment, mm -hmm. and uh, this makes you just work. And when you get more and more connected to the to this vastness, when you start living from the reality that uh, you are not separate and you don't have responsibility only for yourself, but you are a part of this universe, you are a part of all life manifested in, in, the, in the universe or on this earth, then you have the desire to make everybody happy, to see everyone happy and also that people come to know the greater joy 
not just that riding on sometimes joy, sometimes um, sorrow. One day suddenly I felt I'm really responsible for the whole world. And from that day I started working, I became a workaholic. Could you tell us a bit about yourself, who you are, what you do, what your background is, sort of more general stuff? Okay, I'm uh, born in India in a very traditional family and I had the fortune of meeting many different kind of people, also the spiritual scene and uh, at the same time my father was a businessman so I lived the both, I experienced both worlds right from the beginning and uh, I had a keen interest also in the world already in my youth and so it happened that I came to Europe and there I was uh, having a business, uh, fashion design business for women. So did you study fashion design? No, it just, uh, just the creativity was kindled. I put my efforts into it and um, somehow that clicked in the market. <laughs> I would say as it is said that sometimes the, the talents are there in us, we only do not know about. So I worked with some people together and uh, I was very successful. Still there was a vacuum inside. So you were designing clothes before, what, what are you doing now? I'm still designing. Designing? Now I help people designing the minds, the soul giving that a beautiful dress. <laughs> and in addition to your design work, your previous design work, your, your current um, more esoteric design work, you also have um, this musical interest. And I understand you also write poetry. Yes. Um, were the music and poetry there all along or were they things that you, talents you discovered um, later in life? I mean, you, are, you do seem to be multi-talented, so when, where did they all spring up? They were certainly there as I once uh, won in competition in my youth in writing and uh, I also studied for some years classical vocal. So these things were there but I did not know that uh, one day they will be that useful for my work or for, uh, for bringing out something. Um, if you say useful, I mean, I understand that you, to some extent, use your music to spread your message. There's a, the concert that I went to, there was singing and, and music and also a meditation. And you, you gave us some, some knowledge as well. You, you spoke to us about the world and, and your understanding of it. How do these all feed in together for you? What's more important, the music or the message or the meditation? Or are they all essential? Well, music unites us. All the minds, they go into one, into one sound and it relaxes us very deeply. And our mind, our analytical mind stops thinking and we can relax. And from that point, if we go into meditation, we can have a very deep meditation. And, and in the meditation, we are experiencing something which we may not understand what it is. And there comes the application of knowledge. So the three all feed into each the, other? Yes. Okay. And now going back to um, the point where you realized there was a vacuum in your life. How did, how did that get you onto, onto the path where you are now? Well, in spite of having everything, when you uh, feel that something is lacking, then you search what's, what's missing in life. And how to come over everyday's difficulties in the mind, I'm saying. Because a difficulty can be something small, a small incident, but your mind if it carries it along for, for, for some time, then it becomes a big suffering. 
and no one likes to suffer, so I also didn't want to suffer. So I was searching for the means of being becoming free from that, that there must be something, because I have seen the spiritual people earlier in my youth in India and my family itself, my parents. And so I started then thinking, what is that? I would also like to attain that state of mind. And so I started, my search brought me back to the study of his scriptures and uh, visiting different enlightened people, asking them my questions and getting the answers and trying to understand that. And in due course of time, I also met uh, my personal master, His Holiness Shri Shri Ravi Shank. And I'm very grateful for that moment when I met him because when you put some higher goal in your life, then you also need a very good guide. Can you tell us about the moment when you met him? It was just like feeling at home. I felt very much at home. Where, where were you? Was this in India? Or in... No, this happened in Switzerland. I went to meet him and uh, I felt very much at home. I didn't feel like going away after this meeting. And uh, thereafter, this continuation of meeting him <laughs> took place. And uh, I just uh, started being around him and offered him my services because I knew that uh, I should do something, that this is not the right path for me anymore because our personal dharma or our personal um, responsibility they keep on changing in life when we are children we have different responsibility like studying and learning many things then we become adult we have different responsibilities so our responsibilities keep on changing and in my case i just realized that uh, fashion line is this is not the life which is right for me. It was right at a time and then it was no more right for me. So I knew that something um, I shall do for the society and if I went, sometimes if I met some people who were already doing some healing or who were spiritual teachers, they started asking me, what do you do? You have so much healing power. Are you using it? And then I used to just think, oh, I would like to use it. And so I was very happy to meet His Holiness Shri Shri Ravi Shankar because under his guidance, I could do much more service than if I started as a single person. And so did you, did you close your business and what happened next? So there was a point where the business uh, was no more for me. It became a burden. And then I knew, okay, it's the time to stop with it and start, make the new start. And was that when you started singing or had the singing already started? There also, um, he played a big role in it. That he just, he used to ask me, sing something. And why didn't you write something? And then all of a sudden I experienced what a flow was there in writing. I myself was not aware about the talents. Most of the, most of the people are not aware what they carry in themselves. They are not carrying just the frustration and just the problems or this and this. Most of the people are carrying a lot of creativity in them, a lot of talents. And that's why it is said when you come to a master, all the talents starts flowering. He just pulls them out one by one. So do you think he saw those talents in you and he, he wanted you to, to bring them out of you? Yes, life? I'm very sure about it. And your healing work, can you tell us more about that? Sort of what you do, as a, what you do apart from singing, writing, um, if, if there's any time left, what, what other work do you do now? I'm also conducting seminars of yoga techniques and uh, I'm also 
giving talks and wherever I'm meeting people, some words of knowledge um, and the smile. <laughs> it's very healing to people. And uh, it's a very beautiful work, you know, when you become an instrument to the people that they come to you not so happy, but when they leave, they are very happy. And that, that happiness also reflects on you. And you yourself are very happy to see the people happy. When we are in the environment of uh, joy, then we also feel joyful. And we are responsible. Each one is responsible to create the environment of joy instead of the environment of conflict and suffering. Um, you are referred to as Mataji. Can I ask what this means and who gave you this title? Mata or Mataji is the mother. And uh, being a spiritual teacher, you are nourishing the qualities, the beauty, the mind, the soul of the people, you are taking care of that like a mother. So, it is, uh, it's like being the mother not just to, not just to your own children, but just the mother to everybody. And the, and the G at the end, what, what does that signify? <laughs> It is just the respect form in the Indian tradition. And, and then when, when you refer to as Mata Omala Devi, what, what does the Devi mean? A Devi, you can call an angel, you can call um, a goddess. And who, and who gave you this, who gave you this title? I mean, is it? It's clearly something special. So. Devi was given by my parents, mm -hmm. Urmila Devi. This name was given by my parents. We have violence and turmoil all over the world today, and many people are very stressed. As a teacher of the knowledge, could you give us some insight into how this can be used practically in people's lives? See, yoga is giving so many um, ways to handle it and uh, some, some application of some breathing techniques to calm down, calm down the mind and uh, being able then to also to transform the negative emotions into positive energy and meditation technique. All these things, if we make a little application of these things for 20-30 minutes every day, then it makes a tremendous uh, change in our uh, being, in our well-being. Also, a little bit looking into the food, instead of uh, consuming when we start learn, learning, when we learn that it's, uh, we can have a very healthy body and mind also with the food, through the food, that also helps. And the knowledge, of course, realizing or knowing that it's a, life is a game. You know, it's not a fight. It's not a struggle. Life is a game. And uh, like in a football team, there are two different teams. One time, one team is losing, losing, another time the other one is losing. That doesn't matter. It makes no difference. Not always uh, running on the greed, more success, more power, more this, more that. So sitting back a little for some moments, observing the nature and asking what it's all this uh, grand universe and seeing life all over, we learn to honor the life. So if people will learn a little bit to honor the life, 
realizing that it's the same life in everyone and we are breathing the same air. We are sharing the same water source of this earth. And everything is given to us in plenty, which is essential to live. If we become little grateful towards that, a lot of difference will be made in their life. We are stressed, we are tensed. If we separate ourselves and then just care about our existence or about only our comfort, then it creates problems in the society. Om Namah Shivaya Om Namah Shivaya Jesus.